Grandparent revenge via malicious compliance. When my son was 22 months old, he trick or treated with his older brother. 9. We went to my work, grandparents, and close neighbors. Then we left him with my parents while his brother and I went around the whole neighborhood. I told my parents to let him have the candy he wanted, meaning what piece he wanted. When we returned, there was a 4-inch high pile of candy wrappers. The poor little guy was racing around like he was on crack. I asked my parents why they let him eat so much. And they both had a devious smile on their faces as my mom said. You told us he could eat what he wanted. I swear they knew what I meant when we left but let him eat all he could as some sort of grandparent revenge. Brutally malicious. It took me two hours to get him calm enough to sleep. I would have left him there for a sleepover. Malicious compliance and petty revenge all in one story. I had an experience in the same vein with my ex-in-laws. They would pick up my 3.5 yo son for visitations. I would hand over his overnight bag with a list for his nap and feeding schedule and every time I would get him back high on sugar and without a nap. I pleaded with my mill every time to stick with the kiddo's schedule as it wasn't fair to either me or him to disrupt his daily routine like this. Every time they ignored me, I had the audacity to first marry their son and then leave him for being abusive. Weird people. Cue malicious compliance. I baked a pan of triple chocolate fudge brownies and we had that for lunch about 15 minutes before. They picked him up. When they came to pick him up, I just handed him over like normal and told them to have a good time. About two hours later, I get a call asking for me to go over nap times and approved food schedules again. Never had a problem with nap time and sugar highs again. Something similar happened at a snow golf fundraiser we took my nephews to. The oldest does not react well to sugar so we limit it. At desert time he's at a table with my cousin. My wife has been saying, there's no rules at snow golf, all day. He didn't get to go alone so my cousin goes with him. She asks my wife what the rules are. To which she replies, there are no rules at snow golf, and off they go. At some point they get back. And my wife realizes he did not use the dessert plates but made the trip to the banquet line and got a dinner plate. He had it loaded up with desert. She asked my cousin why she let him do that. Well, he took off ahead of her. And there were no rules. Needless to say, there were suddenly rules at snow golf. I'm 12 and 16 years older than the siblings in this story. Halloween 1998. My four-year-old sister was an adorable little witch with black tulle skirting and big pointy hat. Strapped over her thick blonde curls. Truly and objectively. Adorable. We went to her grandparents. My stepmom's parents. House for a snack before trick or treating BC, just candy, was bad. Our diminutive heroine had nothing but disdain for any food other than large dill pickles and one-third of a hot dog. No bun. After the tea or tea, the parentals took us all home so that I could babysit our little Shirley Temple and our newborn 11-week-old baby brother. At 16 I had been babysitting for a long time but was still a mite nervous over watching such a brand new baby. Little did I know that he would be the easy one. He literally slept the entire time they were gone. About an hour after the parents left. This was stepmom's first time out in over a year BC pregnancy and I really didn't want to call them. Back BC she really did need and deserve the break. Lil sister came out of her room. I heard those soft padding feet walking down the carpeted hall. Exchanged a look with my boyfriend so he would pause the gory slasher flick. Candyman too, I think? And stood up to redirect her back to bed. Just as I heard the splash down, think of someone pouring chunky stew onto the carpet from waist level and then make it smell like pickles, hot dogs and chocolate. 
Think the Kevin Chili scene from The Office. Being 16. I made a half-assed attempt to clean it up before I just threw a towel down on the carpet. Nodding approvingly at my efficiency of leaving the mess for dad but not having to look at it. Anymore. I hustled the baby diva into the shower. Hosing her off had a depressingly minor effect on the smell that permeated her thick hair as I sat. With her in my lap for two hours. Gagging on the vomit smell. It took a while to find my parents by calling a bunch of rural Wisconsin bars on Halloween. BC no cell phones yet. I mean. They existed but only lawyers. Traveling salespeople and the girls from Clueless really had them at that point. The grown-up baby witch is now on her way to being a nurse practitioner very soon. Which makes my long-standing threat to vomit upon her in retaliation. Just slightly more believable. To those who've commented that sugar doesn't make kids hyperactive. I was a hyperactive kid who couldn't get near sugar without going nuts. I was finally diagnosed in my 20s with hypoglycemia. Sugar and alcohol were gave me fantastic highs. But the crashes were abysmal. My son was born when I was 36. After I'd conquered my sugar addiction. At age 3 he and a girl with similar problems went totally bonkers at a friend's party. When we finally got him into the car for the ride home. And he passed out. We found out another friend had been feeding them M&Ms all evening because they thought their wild behavior was funny. Said friend had no kids. It wasn't funny for us or the parents of the other child. I had a rule when my kids were younger that if you give my kids sugar after 5 p.m. they were going to spend the night with you. One time my mill gave my daughter ice cream while they were out shopping with her. This was around 9 p.m. When they brought her home and stayed talking I packed her an overnight bag and when they went to leave I gave them the bag and told my daughter she is having a sleepover. Them went and put her in the car seat in their car while they complained it was late and they were tired. But I told them they knew the rule and I was not bending on it. Had a peaceful night and they never did that again without first asking. Haha. <laughs> The sugar hyperactivity myth is based on a single study from the mid-1970s in which a doctor removed the sugar from one child's diet and that child's behavior improved. Since then, over a dozen larger studies have been conducted without proving sugar causes hyperactivity. Interestingly enough, researchers have found that parents are more likely to say that their kids are overly active when they think they've consumed sugar. In one study, parents were asked to rate their child's hyperactivity after consuming a drink with sugar. Unknown to the parents, the drink was sugar-free. But the parents still rated their child as more hyperactive. HTTPS www.eatright.org slash health slash wellness slash healthful habits slash sugar does it really cause hyperactivity. I love your parents, but I'm sorry the baby had such a big sugar high. Been there. Why does sugar make kids so hyper but now if I eat sugar I feel sluggish and want to sleep? There's no justice. I need energy much more than a four-year-old. That's half the fun of being a grandparent. Rolling on the floor laughing jack em full of sugar and send em home. My kids were hyperactive 24-7. So I never noticed any effect from sugar. But their entire childhood I felt like we were barely hanging on from the sleep deprivation of early mornings and late nights and the exhaustion of trying to get them to do homework. Glad we're on the other side of that. Sorry not an ADHD thread but just relived it with the stories. I'm glad it was only about of sugar hyperactivity he suffered not a bellyache. Poor baby. My daughter lets me give my toddler grandson all the sugar he wants. But only when he is going to dad's. Kids. When my youngest was about a year and a half old. 
We had gotten a Pizza Hut special that included the Cinestics and frosting. After little girl ate some pizza, I gave her one of the cinnamon sticks. Without the frosting, my husband walked by saw that she had the cinnamon sticks and said well you need to have frosting. With this, he opened the container of frosting and dipped her cinnamon stick in it so she could eat it with the frosting. He then set the frosting within her reach. I got up from the table to do something and came back to her high chair and there she was holding the container of frosting with her tongue stuck in the middle of it and a big smile on her face. Shortly after this my husband, myself and our eight-year-old were sitting on the couch while this toddler was running back and forth, diagonally across the room over and over and squealing at the top of her lungs. It was actually perfect timing, because the eight-year-old had just been arguing with us that sugar does not make kids hyper. This will be me as a grandpa. Sugar does not make children hyperactive the excitement of the situation makes children extra excited. I had a different sort of revenge. I warned my mom not to let my toddler have chocolate when she was keeping him overnight for the first time because he would be too excited to fall asleep. She found out the hard way that I did indeed know what I was talking about. You should have left him with your parents and picked him up the following day. Once my brother, as a kindergarten student, was visiting our uncle, he could have some cake, if he wanted it. Fourteen slices later, my mother was not happy, and neither was my brother. None of the slices stayed inside. Let them eat cake face with raised eyebrow. Best part about being a grandparent. Load the kiddos with sugar and send the little balls of pure sugar adrenaline rush back home to their parents. That's what I'm planning to do. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our playlists full of similar content. Epicaracast is like doom scrolling for your ears. Please like, share, and subscribe.